And then there are many, many studies showing cross-sectional studies and longitudinal studies showing that exercise training will lower uh, systemic chronic inflammation at rest. I will show you um, what happens in a very short time if people do the opposite of what we tell them to do. So we ask young healthy men to be lazy, to take the car instead of walking, to take the elevator instead of the climbing the stairs. And then could, uh, they could do just, they did just 1,000 to 2,000 steps a day. So they were lazy, but they were not bed resting. So what we did now was that we recruited active people walking 10,000 steps a day, and they were only allowed to walk 1,500 steps per day for 14 days. Fitness levels decreased. They lost 1.2 kilo in body weight. Please don't tell it to anyone. So they lost, of course, muscle mass. And when we did an oral fat tolerance test, you could see sometimes uh, the plasma became milky, blood lipids increased much more in a longer time. Then we did an ODTT, which indicated uh, glu insulin resistance. We confirmed this with an insulin clamp. We used stable isotopes, confirming that inactivity reduces insulin-stimulated peripheral glucose uptake, and this was visible in when we took biopsies and looked at the insulin signaling cascade. And then we looked at, at visceral fat, and you can see the arrows pointing at uh, the visceral fat uh, before and after, and although they lost uh, a little more than one kilo, then they accumulated uh, uh, quite a, a significant amount of visceral fat, and we have repeated this in many independent studies, also in animal studies. So in relation to these 14 days of inactivity, uh, my student called this 14 days at Mallorca all-inclusive study. Uh, we find impaired glucose uptake, impaired insulin signaling, hyperlipidemia, loss of muscle mass and fitness, and then increased visceral fat mass. And why is this important? It's important because there are many indications that visceral fat is invaded by macrophages and is a source of chronic systemic inflammation, which can then influence most cells of the body. Then uh, the next question is, of course, what is the link? And here we also looked at uh, IL-6. It has been well established that um, IL-6 deficiency can cause uh, mature onset uh, obesity. We have a lot of different uh, human intervention studies showing, for instance, that when we block IL-6, uh, it impairs mobilization of free fatty acids during rest and exercise in both lean and obese people. So in this study, we asked or whether IL-6 blockade could ameliorate reduction in adipose tissue, especially ectopic adipose tissue following exercise training. So we had people who were healthy but uh, uh, obese, abdominally obese, and we asked them to train or we supervised their training for 12 weeks. Um, we did that either with or without uh, blocking IL-6 signaling with uh, tocilizumab, and we had two control groups, either with or without uh, IL-6 uh, blockade. So what we found here was that exercise training reduced, after 12 weeks, reduced visceral fat mass. That was expected. But we also found that the exercise-induced fat reduction was reversed by IL-6 blockade. So IL-6 is required for exercise-mediated reduction in adipose tissue. So the myokine IL-6, the IL-6 increase during exercise is required for this reduction. We found the same when we looked at another depot, epicardial uh, adipose tissue, which has a very, very bad uh, prognostic, uh, uh, is a very bad, bad prognostic sign, uh, a reduction in relation to exercise training, which was abolished when we inhibited IL-6 signaling. So again, IL-6 is also required for epicardial fat loss following exercise. We also found that IL-6 was required for uh, muscle mass growth uh, and for, 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 of, of, of the heart. So both acutely and on a long-term basis, exercise can induce um, uh, anti-inflammatory effects. We also find that exercise induces IL-6 uh, delays gastric emptying in humans, so blood glucose is not high after a meal, which again can dampen inflammation. 
So there, I hope I can convince you that Mosul is this um, uh, endocrine organ. It produces hundreds of, of myokines. And uh, the last few minutes of my talk, I will simply share uh, data from uh, an exercise as medicine study. We have many, but I will give you some indications from uh, the effects in patients with type 2 diabetes. And here we were uh, inspired by, by te the television. I think most of you um, know the Biggest Loser program, or, and we, we have another program in Denmark called U-Turn. We have a charismatic coach. He invites people who have big problems, obesity, depression, uh, type 2 diabetes, into uh, prime time television, and then they come out in the other end, and they are very lean and very happy. Don't know this kind of, yeah. So we wondered whether this also would work in real life. And we uh, copied uh, the intervention from the television and asked whether intensive lifestyle could be used as medication. Randomized uh, patients with type 2 diabetes to this U-turn model where they had to exercise um, uh, one, year, one, um, one hour six times a week for one a year. And then um, we had a control group. And we had a, 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 a blinded a physician who would control their medication uh, according to an algorithm. So this is the HbA1c, and you have to remember that if HbA1c declined, then the medication would be uh, reduced. So let's look at the, the medication. After one year, 74% in the intervention group, the U-turn group, could reduce their medication. After one year, 56% could re discontinuate hypoglycemic medication. I'll show this again. This is a U-turn group. After seven, one year, reduction in medication for 74% and 56% was without medication. We didn't do anything for the next year, and after one year, there was only 34%. So people return, but maybe six times a week is also too much. So we just published this uh, study led by uh, group leader Matthias Witt Larsen. Uh, and here uh, we, um, we had four arms, uh, control, diet, three times exercise a week, and again six times exercise a week. And we have a lot of data, but just uh, showing you that maybe um, the disposition index can sort of be, be restored. There is a weight loss, and it's of course mainly due to diet, but uh, exercise adds to this. Uh, we also find that exercise has a profound effect on uh, hep hepatic steatosis, and especially look at the pancreas. This little part is not published yet. So diet alone has no effect, but exercise three and six times has a marked, gives a marked reduction in fat infiltration in the pancreas and again, an effect on visceral fat also. When we look at discontinuation of uh, medication, uh, we find that uh, there's a large effect of all intervention groups, and maybe three times a week is really something that will give you highly significant effects. Looking into the data, it's clear that this intensive lifestyle intervention with high volume of exercise has the potential to improve beta cell function and is associated with decreased abdominal adiposity and low-grade inflammation. So with this short talk, I just want to emphasize the role of exercise and muscle as an endocrine organ and suggest to you that the anti-inflammatory effects of exercise may contribute to a long health span. Thanks to...